Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about the anatomy of the internal thoracic artery. The internal thoracic artery, it arises from the inferior aspect of the first part of the subclavian artery opposite the thyrocervical trunk. So, internal thoracic artery, internal thoracic artery is a branch of the subclavian artery. Okay, it arises from the subclavian artery, we will say the first part of the subclavian artery. First is a branch of the first part of the subclavian artery. Internal thoracic artery is a branch of the first part of the subclavian artery okay. so here is the first part of subclavian artery that is medial to the scalene anterior muscle this is the scalene anterior muscle scalene anterior muscle so the subclavian artery medial to the scalene anterior muscle is the first part of the subclavian artery from the inferior aspect of the subclavian artery from the inferior aspect aspect just opposite the thyrocervical trunk opposite the thyrocervical tract. Okay, we got the subclavian artery. Subclavian artery is a branch of the brachiocephalic trunk or brachiocephalic artery on the right side. Subclavian artery is a branch of the arch of the aorta on the left side. Okay, we got the origin of the internal thoracic artery. Then we have to go through the course of the internal thoracic artery. Course of the internal thoracic artery. Internal thoracic artery. Okay, it descends to the thorax posterior to the clavicle and first costal cartilage. So it descends to the thorax it descends to the thorax posterior to the clavicle posterior to the clavicle okay and first costal cartilage and first costal cartilage okay we got that okay then it has some re relationship there it is crossed by the Ipsilateral phrenic nerve near its origin. It is crossed by the phrenic nerve. Phrenic nerve near its origin. Okay. 
it is located behind the brachiocephalic vein and usually the phrenic nerve is also in front of the in front of the internal thoracic artery so it is behind the brachiocephalic vein the internal jugular vein and the phrenic nerve okay so it is behind the internal jugular vein and brachiocephalic brachiocephalic vein okay we got that so then it descends on the internal surface of the thorax slightly lateral to the sternum here so this is our internal thoracic artery internal thoracic artery okay thoracic artery that is a branch of the first part of the subclavian artery comes out of the subclavian artery from the inferior aspect opposite the thyrocervical trunk this is thyro cervical trunk okay and at this level it is crossed by the phrenic nerve and it is behind the brachiocephalic vein and internal jugular vein okay then what happens it descends lateral to the sternum okay on the internal surface of the thorax okay and posterior to the upper six coastal cartilages. These are coastal cartilages. One, two, three, four, five, six. These are coastal cartilages. This is coastal cartilages. Okay. So it descends behind the first, second, third, fourth, fifth. Sixth intercostal, sixth coastal cartilages reaches the sixth intercostal space. We know that we can count the intercostal space. This is the second coastal cartilage going to the sternal angle. Okay, so first intercostal space, second intercostal space, third, fourth, fifth, sixth intercostal space. Okay, so after descending past the second coastal cartilage. What happened? It is it is related to the transverse thoracic muscle. It runs anterior to the transverse thoracic muscle. Okay. Also called sternocostalis muscle. Okay. So we have the relationship with that of the sternocostalis muscle. So it runs anterior to the transverse thoracic muscle. Between the slips of the transverse thoracic muscle, the artery contracts the parietal pleura and the, it, it contracts the parietal pleura posteriorly. So, this is if you look at that section, a section along the body of the sternum. This is the sternal body. Okay. This is the sternal body. And if, if you have a section there, we we'll go. The yeah, sternal body is here. This is sternal body. Okay. And this is coastal cartilage. Coastal cartilage. Coastal cartilage. Okay. So we got that. Now this is the internal thoracic artery here and it is accompanied by the vena comitans two vein accompanies the internal thoracic artery it goes to the third intercostal space then there will be formation of the internal internal thoracic vein that will open into the brachiocephalic vein so we got the course of the course of the internal thoracic artery the first and second intercostal space it is related to the 
to the endothoracic fascia then below that it is related to the sternocostalis muscle okay so what is the termination termination the six intercostal space okay so the internal thoracic artery the internal thoracic artery terminates at the sixth intercostal space intercostal space and you have two terminal branches one is the superior epigastric artery another one is the musculophrenic artery it has two terminal branches terminal branches what are those two branches one is the this is the musculophrenic artery musculophrenic artery and this is the superior epigastric artery superior epigastric artery okay so what are the terminal branches of the internal thoracic artery our answer is the musculophrenic artery and the superior epigastric artery the musculophrenic artery will follow the costal margin okay it, it will follow the costal margin costal margin up to the ninth costal cartilage up to the tip of the ninth costal cartilage up to the tip of nine costal cartilage okay cartilage how about the superior epigastric artery superior epigastric artery goes to the abdomen it is a content of rectus sheath it goes behind the rectus abdominis muscle and at the level of the umbilicus it anastomoses with the inferior epigastric artery that is the branch of the external iliac artery okay so we got two terminal branches one is musculophrenic artery another one is the superior epigastric artery okay we got that now we will go through the branches of the internal thoracic artery branches branches of the internal thoracic artery okay we have another name it is also called internal mammary artery so internal thoracic artery is also called internal mammary artery what are the branches we have anterior intercostal arteries anterior intercostal arteries okay so two arteries in each intercostal space two arteries in each intercostal space on each side intercostal space on each side okay we got that so two one is passing along the rib lower border the rib of the of the superior rib another branch another branch should come out of the along the superior border of the lower rib so two it may come as two or they may start as one then may split into two okay so in each intercostal space we have two anterior intercostal arteries they are branches of the internal thoracic artery the upper one passes along the inferior border of the one rib above okay 
suppose this is the rib here this is the upper upper end to intercostal artery for this space the lower branch is going on the superior border of the of the lower rib okay so they may come from from independently two or may come one artery then split into two okay we got the anterior intercostal arteries then one most important artery is the pericardiacophrenic artery pericardiacophrenic artery okay this is important artery pericardiacophrenic artery some books say pericardiophrenic artery that is also acceptable okay pericardiacophrenic artery that start at the upper part of the of the internal thoracic artery it passes over the pericardium along with the phrenic nerve you must remember that accompanies accompanies phrenic nerve okay so what nerve what artery accompanies phrenic nerve that is the pericardiacophrenic artery okay its name is pericardiacophrenic artery so it should supply the pericardium and the diaphragm okay we got anterior intercostal artery pericardiacophrenic artery okay we have also the we have also sternal artery sternal arteries better to say mediastinal arteries some books the grey's anatomy says sternal artery mediastinal artery mediastinal arteries okay suppose these arteries it supplies the periosteum over the sternum the red bone marrow about the sternum the muscles the sternocostal is muscle okay also the pericardium the mediastinal structure is supplied by the mediastinal arteries actually these artery anastomos with that of other arteries even with the bronchial artery the entry intercostal artery forms the subplural arterial plexus okay so it it forms the subplural mediastinal plexus okay so this is this this will form the subplural mediastinal plexus so we got anterior intercostal artery pericardiophrenic artery mediastinal artery then we go to the perforating artery okay these arteries follows the the cutaneous nerve okay they follows follows the cutaneous nerves okay we got the intercostal artery pericardiophrenic artery mediastinal artery perforating artery okay then we have two terminal branches we'll add here one is the musculophrenic artery musculophrenic artery another one is the superior epigastric artery superior epigastric artery okay epigastric artery so you got the branches of the branches of the internal thoracic artery okay so we got the branches you must remember that the anterior intercostal artery will unite with that of the posterior intercostal artery okay anterior intercostal artery in each space two arteries okay this will unite with the posterior intercostal artery this will unite with the collateral branch of posterior intercostal artery okay so we have gone through the branches of the of the of the internal thoracic artery again let us summarize coming out of the subclavian artery this is subclavian artery subclavian artery okay and this is the thyrocervical trunk just on the surface we have the internal thoracic artery 
okay this is the first costal cartilage the, this is the first intercostal space second intercostal space here third fourth fifth sixth intercostal space and we have the here is the bifurcation this artery is accompanied by vena committance the third intercostal space will have the internal thoracic vein that will ultimately will will open into the brachiocephalic vein okay this is a temper section of the thorax what structure we are looking this is the internal thoracic artery with vena comitentis what is this muscle we have some muscle here this is the transversus thoracic muscle or sternocostalis muscle sternocostalis or transversus thoracic muscle okay muscle okay and what is this this is the pleura pleura containing what containing the lung here this is the pleura okay pleura we got that this is the body of the sternum this is the costal cartilage this is the muscle the sternocostalis muscle this is the pleura so this is related to the pleura and in, and the and also the the sternocostalis muscle okay so we got the branches again terminal branches the musculophrenic artery that passes along the costal margin and we get the anterior intercostal artery one pair two pair one pair two pair three four five six pair should come from the internal thoracic artery then remember that anterior intercostal arteries anterior intercostal arteries in the seventh eighth and ninth intercostal space intercostal space are branches of the of the musculophrenic artery musculophrenic artery okay that is the branch of internal thoracic artery so first second third fourth fifth sixth enter in the coastal arteries are branches of the internal thoracic artery Seventh, eight, ninth intercostal spaces. The anterior intercostal arteries are branches of the musculophrenic artery, and there is no anterior intercostal artery in the tenth and eleventh intercostal space. The musculophrenic artery goes to the ninth costal cartilage, tip of the ninth costal cartilage, and it anastomoses with the posterior intercostal arteries. It can also anastomose with the with that of the inferior phrenic artery. It anastomose also with the deep circumflex iliac artery. Okay, we got the anterior intercostal artery and terminal branches. Now we'll go to the clinical anatomy of the internal thoracic artery. We will give, we'll give emphasis on that clinical anatomy. Okay, internal thoracic artery is very commonly used in case of coronary artery bypass grafting. So, internal thoracic artery is used in CABG. What is that? That is coronary artery bypass grafting okay so if a person has blockage of the coronary artery a part of the internal thoracic artery is taken it is harvested and it, it is it, it, it will it will used in CABG so the person has a heart problem his artery is blocked here so the internal thoracic artery piece of that will unite the the arch of the aorta aorta here 
and going to the distal part okay so there's a bypass bypass system or sometimes some surgeon connect the distal portion to the internal thoracic artery so the heart muscle will survive due to nutrition by the blood from the internal thoracic artery so it is so important artery we have other arteries also used in case of coronary artery bypass grafting like radial artery even mesenteric artery the great saphenous vein is also used in case of coronary artery bypass grafting but internal thoracic artery is the best choice as far as possible because it will not be blocked very quickly it will be blocked later than that of the the great saphenous vein so this is important the internal thoracic artery used in case of coronary artery bypass grafting that's all about the internal thoracic artery if you like my video please share the information with your friends please support my channel and please subscribe my channel have a nice day bye now